I've never shot a pig, and I'm gonna have to in about two weeks, so I thought, I need, I know how to do it. It's in my head. So today I thought I would go out and just practice. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I'm, it's not, the gun's not loaded. Um, it's on safety. I'm just gonna go and act like I'm about to do this and see what it's like. Someone from our fan base actually reached out to us. They're a NRA certified gun safety instructor. He reached out and offered us gun training lessons. Ourselves and the hauler. So two families gonna get gun safety lessons and I didn't think that could hurt. Generally, I think I'm pretty safe around guns, you know, keeping them always in safety mode, unloaded when we're not using them, um, well out of reach of the children, and then when we're shooting, having everybody behind, um, got ourselves some safety glasses using earmuffs. But what I hope to get out today is to learn something that I didn't know before. I think guns are an amazing tool for the homestead and certainly are a must for predator protection or for harvest. And I think that it's important to learn gun safety on it because they are, it is such a powerful tool. And we just wanna be the most careful we can possibly be. So we're taking time out. This is gonna be like a two and a half hour lesson. And learn to the best of our ability how to stay safe. Not looking too good. It's kind of chilly out here. Super wet, probably 100% humidity. I think it's drizzling. I don't know if we need to be outside for this gun safety lesson or not, but I don't really know how this is gonna turn out. Hope the, hopefully this weather holds off. I think we could be outside right now, but not if it gets any wetter. It should start any minute actually. 10 minutes, 10 minutes till two. The guy's supposed to be here at two. Let's clean up after lunch. Is this your guy? Mm. Is somebody coming? Yeah. Uh, maybe this is him. Gunman. Rebecca, it's that time. Yeah, this is probably him. It's him. Well, I guess we won't be cleaning up. Hey man. Hey Justin, How's I'm going? Chris. Good. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Yep. Hi, beautiful one. Hello. How are you? Good, how are <laughs> I'm you? I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Oh, are we having yeah, fun today? In. Yeah. With adults, how far do you want me to go with the kids? I was thinking that you would definitely go over the basics with them as far as how to hold the gun, like Boy Scout level type yeah. of training. How to hold it, yeah. how to make sure the safety's on, all that kind of stuff. The protocol for moving the gun from the house to where they're going or whatever. Right, safe handling, how yeah. to use it, how to yep. make sure it's in a safe manner. That and that's what I, that's what I would normally do, but I always like to check. Right, what do you expect us to get out of this, Chris? Basic understanding of safety with firearms. I want okay. I want to get you where you guys can feel more comfortable. Hi guys, I'm Chris, and the mic just fell off. <laughs> We're gonna go over some gun safety stuff today. Is that cool with you guys? So one of the first things we wanna learn is anytime that you see a gun as be in the house or whatever, and if you're by yourself and you're not used to having them around, you need to go let an adult know. So if you're at a friend's house and you see a gun sitting on the counter, or if we see one sitting on the table, or in a bedroom laying on a cabinet or something, this is your safety. It's your finger. If you keep your finger straight and off the trigger, that gun cannot go off. The second thing is, if you're pointing the gun, if you're using it, you always want to make sure that you know what you're pointing it at and what's past it. Because let's say we're outside shooting a target. We got cans set up, right? And Aunt Flossie's sitting behind those targets. Oh no, now we got a cow that's in trouble and you guys are going to be in trouble if you kill a milk cow. That's where the bullet goes, okay? So if we make sure that there's nothing in there shiny, it can be silver or it can be gold or a 
brass color. So if we look in there and we make sure that there's nothing in there, we want to look three times. Turn away and look again. That's a little silly, isn't it? But I'm making sure three times that that gun can't hurt me. They're, they're a very versatile, very safe, and one of the other things that makes that weapon so safe, one round at a time. Single shot. It's a single shot rifle. All right, so this is your 22. This is automatic, and it, what it does is you have a gas system in here that's sending this bolt, like in the bolt action weapon that I have. It's being operated by the powder that's in each one of these, these rounds. So as that round explodes and that explosion happens, it sends the projectile down the, down the barrel. It pushes that brass piece back into this mechanism here that puts it down, causes, this is the bolt, causes it to go back and chamber another round automatically. So where at the breakdown rifle, I have to manually put each round in. I have to manually take out each empty casing. Okay, it'll actually pop it out. With the bolt action, same situation. I have another round ready to go in. On this weapon, once again, on safety. your hand's off there. I'm looking in, I can see that there's rounds in here, right? Mm -hmm. okay, so, yeah. there's two ways that you can do this. I can reach up ah. and press that there and continue to do that. But the easiest way to do this is to press this button right here. And on different makes of firearms are different. Mm -hmm. Push that button. And I want to go three or four times past where I see the last red round or blue round or black round. That no, round, no. I leave this back. Leave it back. Uh -huh. so Phys open. Right? Physically look. The same as I have on all the other firearms. Check my finger. Look in the bottom. Okay. This gun is now safe. We're done with the inside part of this gun safety lesson. In a minute, we're going to actually go out and do dry run staying safe while we're going to harvest the pigs. My mind is like blown. I'm, I've, like, I've learned so much in so little of a time. Like, not to sh target practice up against the bank just in case there's rocks underneath and get a ricochet, but instead shoot up against hay bales where there's more open and banks further away. Keeping people 15 feet uh, away, passing guns, on safety, holding the gun down as you walk. I usually hold the gun up. That's not necessarily a safety issue, as more practical. If you're holding the gun down, say you're going out to get a predator, you're, instead of holding it up, you're holding it down. Not only is it safe, but you're, you're able to pull it up and quicker use it. Let's see if there's anything else that really surprised or that I'll find beneficial. Oh, the finger thing. It's not guns that hurt people or animals. It's fingers. Keeping that finger straight and off the trigger. That gun could sit there till the end of time and never hurt anything. So just that is just gonna keep us that much more safe on the homestead. Very appreciative of this so far. I can't wait to see how we can even more humanely and safely harvest these pigs. Okay, Chris, so say we're coming out here to kill them. They haven't eaten in a while. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna put, well, I'm gonna move them to a fresh, fresh grass. They've right. been working a garden area right here. Right. What I'd do to, is I would isolate them out so you didn't have to kill the, kill the animal in the mud, even though you're gonna wash right. it. That's right, that's what I'm gonna like do. That. So isolate them out into to the, uh, the area in which you want them. Then I'm gonna look at the actual individual animal, such as the back, this larger pig in the back. If you look at his eye set versus the other two, these other two have a narrower eye set. So I'm gonna shoot him a little differently than I would these two here. I'm gonna find that cross point, you know, at the eyes. I want that angle to go down and try to intersect from that, that point in the brain okay. to the bottom of almost the juggle or the yeah. trachea is where I'm aiming in an imaginary line of going through. Like if I was gonna shoot this, Do it. this let's pig try right run. Here, let's try run. If I was gonna no, if I was gonna shoot this pig, I would come here. Okay, do he'd that. He'd have feed. He'd have feed, and no, I would let's do be. Feed. Let's do feed. And everybody needs to be standing back. This is good. We're gonna treat this as a real run. So right, everybody's 15 be, feet if back. If I was gonna do this, okay, and I was gonna shoot the pig at let's say at the other end, I would tell everybody else, everybody stay here. You're still gonna get to visualize and see what everything that's happening, so you're not gonna miss anything. So everybody stand behind this point. I would take one person with me. Whoever's going to be doing the bleeding, 
we would go up. So me and Justin are gonna go up and harvest this pig. Okay. So we're gonna walk down Let's here. Let's pretend we're doing it right here. So Chris, I'll take a little bit of food. Huh? Yep. I would put it in three pans. All right. Why? We're gonna separate them out. You're shooting the dominant pig first. That's the way that I would go. If I was gonna harvest all three pigs at the same time, yeah. I would shoot the dominant pig and work my way down the level because they're gonna be more submissive as you go. Now, now we're doing three pans even though we're not gonna shoot three back to back. We're just, you might not wanna put, when you're doing this, you might not wanna put it all in, just enough to separate yeah. those pigs out okay. to keep them uh, occupied in a way. All right, now see, so they're separated out. So let's say this one is the dominant pig just for, for the Okay. Sake of saying. So I'm gonna walk over while he's here and he's done. I'm gonna come in right above the eyes. Bam. Okay. Wait, you just did it? I just did it, bam. Okay, do it again. All right, so we're here, I'm ready. So this kind of movement. This gun is unloaded, it's safe gun, this is just mocking. That's where I would and be at that angle down. That's a pretty sharp angle down. Yeah. When I'm at that angle down, I'm gonna shoot right in this area. Okay. At about this angle, if you look at the gun. I'm not shooting like this. I'm shooting at an angle. But with the way that they are. That's steeper than 45. Yeah. I'm going to come in. Do it okay. again on him. Okay. So here's the dominant. Boom. Now. Right between the eyes. Now, I probably wouldn't use my feed tray. I'd put the feed directly on the ground because I'm going to okay, put a yeah. hole in there if it passes. And I will because we'll put yeah. it on grass. So you're going to have it there? Now do it again now, one more you time. Could, you could go to a kneeling position. Where you, is this on? No. Okay. So you could go into a kneeling position to get a little better. I like that. Boom. That first one seems so steep. Like almost well, up towards the Well, that was trying to come over if you were over here. Okay. If I have him out here where he's there. I like You kneeling. know, I can't. Now you don't want to. You don't want to come in here and be shooting this way. I see I'm going into the, the pit Then you're scabbing, going to the neck. But I'm wanting to come in and aim for that point right there. Do you see how I was like on this pig here? Yeah, do it again. Like see, I'm aiming for that point there. Okay. So you're at a that angle. Okay. So you're coming through, you're shooting. You're shooting the animal this way. Is it the end of the world if you were off 20 degrees? No, not with the 410. Okay, that's Not another with the 410, reason. Not with, with that small 22 round, if you're off that distance, it could be a different. With that 410, okay. the impact's going to uh, incapacitate okay. that animal. God forbid we don't we don't knock out the pig. He starts squealing, running around. There you go. That's the next round. If he's running, he's he's probably not going to be running too far if you just put a 410 between his eyes no. at some point. But if he does, you know, that's going to be a judgment call on yourself. If he's running, then you're going to want to shoot. And what I was talking about earlier, let's look at this this hog here. If you look at this hog, they have a large plate that's right in this area here. Okay? You do not want to shoot that animal in here. You want to shoot about that third rib back going forward. So, Looking for organs, not the brain. Right. If they okay. were running on you, if there was a bad shot or something like that, that to me would okay. be the most humane shot. All People right. might argue that point, but for me, if they're running, that's where I'm going to aim okay. at. Now you're loaded, and now you're ready right. to fire. So I like the knee approach, that's all right. Okay. Oh, I, I think it's a much better All right, you position. tell me if I would have killed this pig, or knocked him out. Oh. <laughs> Sideways is not a good idea, right? Yep, just remember, you got all the time in the world. Boom, done, dead pig. Okay. That's a dead pig. He was looking dead on on you, you were at that point. That yeah. skull and that impact of that 410 okay. round is going to knock that pig out. Okay. So, aiming in this, come here. Aiming in this this area right in here right. is where I would try to get in. Right. Boom. Now, see if you're down yeah, here. You're yeah. If you're right. if you're right in here on the eyeballs, you're probably not going to hit the brain. Okay. But if you're, come here. Uh, come you're here. right. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> right. Right in this area. <laughs> That's tug like of war with a pig. A yeah. Pound brick there, buddy. Yeah. You're right, right at that angle, going in this trajectory, kind of with that jawline. Oh. Uh, that's that why. That's why. Yeah. I'm not sure. I was pulling. Yeah. And if you can get close, yeah. That one you may have been off and maybe hit him. I felt like I was off. So try to get as close as you can. Boom. Yeah, and this that's you missed that opportunity. But the opportunity will so come. I just back. need to take time. There you go. Be in a hurry.
you go. <laughs> yeah. Came yeah. Right but 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 yeah. you see, it's Forget it's going to be the point there. of keeping them. These pigs aren't as, as calm as these because they've not been here as no. long. Okay. So they're they're going to be a little bit more jumpy. And once you okay. once you drop the first one, the other two are probably going to be a little freaked out. But it's going to be a while before you. Yeah. If you're doing them once at a time to do okay. like your class or whatever, are you going to drop all three of them and have them all dead at the same time okay. bleeding out, or are you going to do one, take it through the process? Yeah. Oh, it'll be time. Okay. It'll be a lot yeah. Of time so to so that they'll be them to calmer. Wind down, yeah, they'll be calmer. Better. You'll there. get better meat out of them. That was absolutely amazing. Yep. So glad that we had Chris yeah. out here from Single Dad Homestead on YouTube. He's he's a wealth of information, a great teacher. I'm feeling so much better about this. Ben's practicing now. That gun is not loaded. Good to go. So much more equipped than I was before. I knew this guy was gun safety, but I didn't know he actually knew how to dispatch a pig. So to get both of those on one day, I'm absolutely thrilled because from the bottom of my heart, I want these guys to not even have a bad day. <laughs> really, one bad day, they're dead. They don't even know it was coming, so they, I don't, I don't want any of that. I want them to drop down uh, in the most humane way possible. And this has helped tremendously. I know now how to shoot them. One thing I was doing is I was going in too low. Um, another thing I think I was doing is I was going to use a 22. Most people use a 22. You can do um, a 22, but in my opinion, if you're some people are concerned about a ricochet. That's a real thing. Now the 22, you can't. The problem, the reason I was veering away from a 410 is because. You can't get lead free in a 410, but if I get a 410 slug and we go to harvest the head, we cut the head in half. This is what Al Lumna taught me. If you cut the head in half, open it up, you can actually remove the ammo and then salvage it that way. I know the brain's going to be all the mush, but we don't really want to eat brain anyway. We'd rather these guys die humanely. This is my first time harvesting pigs, so I'm anxious to just do it in the most humane way possible even if I'm sacrificing some of the brain. So I'm gonna go with 410, less margin for error. I feel more confident that way. Maybe as confident it builds, uh, we'll move into the 22. But for now, we're sticking with the 410. So I'm thankful this happened. I'm feeling so much more confident for the, it's in like two weeks. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. I created so much more content surrounding it. I can only fit so much in a vlog. I created a three-part series. I put it in my member area, but I'm making one of those parts available to you guys. I want everybody to get it. It's gonna be absolutely no cost to you guys. All you gotta do is sign up for my email list. You get it, it's about 10 minutes, and Chris goes over the three I must have technique, tactics, whatever you wanna call them, to stay safe around guns, and it's absolutely Amazing, it's absolutely no brainer, but it's also absolutely like, oh, I didn't think of that. So it's good stuff, sign up for it. It's totally free, you'll be on my email list. It just means you get notified for vlogs and stuff like that every once in a while um, and whatnot. So check it out, I hope you enjoy it.